In the world of espionage and aerial reconnaissance, two aircraft stand as titans of the skies. Although they share a lot in common, they are in fact different aircrafts. They are shrouded in secrecy and are the ultimate engineering marvels for their time. The Oxcart A-12 and the SR-71 Blackbird, these magnificent machines, born in the crucible of Cold War espionage, represent the pinnacle of spy plane technology, each with its own unique set of capabilities and mysteries. Let's embark on a thrilling journey to compare and contrast the Oxcart A-12 and the SR-71 Blackbird, delving into the unparalleled intrigue that surrounds them. On one side, we have the Oxcart A-12, officially known as the Lockheed A-12, which was a high-speed, high-altitude reconnaissance one-seated aircraft developed for the CIA in the 1960s. It became operational on November 12, 1965, and was the successor of the U-2 spy plane. On the other side, we have the SR-71, or Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird, which is the two-seater A-12 predecessor. It is known as a legendary reconnaissance aircraft with a fascinating history, deployed by the U.S. Air Force. Let's explore the Oxcart A-12 first. In 1959, Lockheed got awarded the Oxcart contract, and the mission was clear. Build a high-altitude and high-speed reconnaissance aircraft capable of beating current-day interceptors, missiles, and other air defense systems. As you might imagine, this was a daunting task. To accomplish the demanding standards, the engineers deployed cutting-edge developments in titanium manufacturing, jet engines, fuel, navigation, electronic countermeasures, radar stealthiness, and pilot life support systems. The A-12 was America's first stealth jet. However, it was never entirely stealthy due to the quantity of fuel it had to carry to fly so fast for so long, requiring alterations in the airframe design that made it easier to be tracked on radar. No plane had ever been made using titanium up to that point and the United States lacked significant amounts of the metal for aircraft manufacture. To make up for the titanium shortages, the CIA obtained it secretly from the world's largest provider, the Soviet Union, by using shell corporations in countries around the world. The A-12's revolutionary design and technology were employed for years afterward, laying the groundwork for future stealth research. The A-12 was certified fully operational in 1965 after hundreds of hours flown at significant personal risk by an exclusive team of CIA and Lockheed test pilots, achieving a sustained speed of Mach 3.2, just over 2,200 miles per hour at 90,000 feet altitude, which is an unbroken record for a piloted jet aircraft. According to public knowledge, that is. Fun fact. Apparently, only married men were allowed to fly the A-12, since the agency ran into problems with pilots who were single. This had everything to do with loyalty and specifically with concerns over defecting or selling the secrets about the aircraft to adversary countries. As far as known operations, one is publicly known. From May 1967 to May 1968, the sole A-12 reconnaissance mission, codenamed Black Shield, cruised over Southeast Asia and later North Korea. Six pilots and three A-12s from the Kadena Air Base in Okinawa, Japan performed 29 flights over East Asia as part of this operation. The intelligence mission was a resounding success. Photo interceptors discovered no missiles that could threaten the U.S. and Allied military forces in the South and assessed the status of 70 of the 190 known missile sites and nine other priority targets after carefully examining nearly a mile of film. Contrary to popular belief, neither Chinese nor North Vietnamese radar tracked the initial flights, nor did North Vietnam launch any missiles against it. North Vietnam fired surface-to-air missiles at Black Shield A-12s three times on subsequent operations in October 1967 and January 1968, but only once caused damage. The reason for its retirement has to do with the sole reason why it was built. It was to evade Soviet Union air defense systems due to its high speed, design and the radar avoiding materials that were used. 
At the end of its lifetime, several worldwide air defense systems were capable of capturing it and targeting it with air defense systems. Next to that, the SR-71 development was in full force, having little use of keeping both in service. President Johnson ordered the A-12 Oxcart to be retired by 1968. The SR-71 The A-12 Oxcart made way for the almighty SR-71, which was developed by Lockheed's Skunk Works Division in the 1960s under the leadership of Clarence Kelly Johnson. It was designed as a high-speed, high-altitude reconnaissance plane for the United States Air Force. The first SR-71A prototype, known as the A-12, took to the skies on April 26, 1962. I guess it's no secret where the name of the prototype came from. After a successful testing period, the Air Force ordered 25 more in August 1963. The first SR-71 flew on December 22, 1964. Throughout its operational career, the SR-71's primary operation base was also out of Kadena Air Base in Japan. The SR-71 was renowned for its extraordinary speed and altitude capabilities. It could fly at speeds exceeding Mach 3, which is three times the speed of sound, and reach altitudes of 85,000 feet and is rumored to be capable of even going higher. Although heavily debated, the A-12 Oxcart has reached a higher altitude, but it depends on the pilot that is asked. The primary mission of the SR-71 was reconnaissance. It could cover vast areas and capture high-resolution images of targets, making it a critical asset in the Cold War for intelligence gathering, as well as there. The SR-71 served with the USAF from 1966 to 1998. During its operational years, it conducted countless reconnaissance missions, including over hostile territories. It played an important role in the Strategic Arms Limitation Talks, or SALT. The SR-71 played a role in verifying compliance with arms control agreements, such as the SALT-1 and the SALT-2 treaties. Its high-speed, high-altitude capabilities were instrumental in monitoring arms control measures. Several other wars, like the Yom Kippur War, the Cold War, and spying operations in North Korea and Russia were conducted with this very aircraft to provide valuable intelligence to the U.S. and its allies. The SR-71's distinctive form, highlighted by its long, narrow wings, sharply pointed nose, and slender fuselage, contributed to its stealthiness. As a result of diverting radar waves away from the source rather than back towards it, this design reduced the radar cross-section of the aircraft. Additionally, the delta wing design limited the angles at which radar signals might bounce back, making it more difficult for adversarial radar systems to identify the aircraft. The SR-71's absence of prominent features and sharp edges also contributed to further lowering its radar signature, increasing its radar spectrum stealth. The exact composition of the SR-71's radar-absorbing paint is classified, but it typically consists of a mixture of iron compounds and other materials. These materials are designed to absorb radar waves rather than reflect them. When radar waves hit the aircraft's surface, covered with this paint, the paint is formulated to absorb and dissipate the energy of the radar waves. This reduces the amount of energy that bounces back to the radar source, effectively making the aircraft less visible on radar screens. The radar-absorbing paint was just one aspect of the SR-71's overall stealth design. The black paint also improves heat radiation and reduces the thermal stress on the airframe because it absorbs the heat and therefore lowers the temperature of the entire airframe. The name Blackbird was born. The development of radar-absorbing materials has continued to advance in military aviation, but for its time, it was groundbreaking technology. Newer stealth aircraft like the F-117 Nighthawk, B-2 Spirit, and F-22 Raptor incorporate more advanced materials and designs to achieve even greater stealth capabilities. While specific details of many SR-71 missions remain classified, 
It is well known that the aircraft played a crucial role in intelligence gathering, treaty verification, and national security during its operational years. The SR-71 was officially retired in 1998, primarily due to the end of the Cold War and budget constraints. Its unique capabilities were no longer deemed essential, but it's safe to say that it was retired because newer and more advanced capabilities had been developed. The SR-71 set numerous speed and altitude records, some of which still stand today. It remains an icon of aviation engineering and a testament to the ingenuity of its designers. As we conclude our exploration of the A-12 Oxcart and the SR-71 Blackbird, we are left with a deep appreciation for the ingenuity, dedication, and secrecy that defined the era of these ultimate spy planes. Together, the A-12 Oxcart and the SR-71 Blackbird reshaped the world of aerial espionage. They provided valuable intelligence, navigated the thin air of secrecy, and were instrumental in reshaping global events and politics. Thank you for watching.